Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. And once again, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I actually say this to myself every day now. So I, I declare, I prophesy over the day as I'm waking up. I say, I don't care what the plans of the enemy are. I just say, this is the day that the Lord has made. But because the Lord has made it, it is good. And so I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome. This is Royal City Community Church. In this church, we glorify Jesus. We teach the word. We walk by the Holy Spirit. And we just honor the Father in all that we do. If you're joining us online, this is the best place to be. The presence of the Lord. So wherever you are in your homes, your kitchens, your bathrooms, your living rooms. And for those of us in the building this morning, this is the house of God. The place that God has called his own and he has established himself. Hallelujah. We send amazing in your presence, O oh Lord, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 32, don't worry, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just going to give you a summary. This is when God was giving the prophecy to Jeremiah that Jerusalem was going to be taken captive. You know, and then it got to verse, uh, I believe it was verse, uh, where is that verse? I just missed that verse again. I think it was 13 or 14. So the Lord, at this point, the Lord has said, I am going to give this hand to, the, to Babylon. I'm going to give them out. But then he gave Jeremiah a wonderful instruction that seemed contrary to what God said he was going to do. He said, my land. I'm trying to find the verse exactly, but I'm not seeing it. Anyways, he told Jeremiah. So he told Jeremiah, this land is going into captivity. But then he told Jeremiah, the same land that is going into captivity, he said, take money and buy land and collect the evidence of the purchase. He said, because I am the Lord God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? He said, yes, I am selling this land into captivity right now because of what this people has done. Then he said, but I will bring my people back to this very land. That's later on in the second half of the chapter. He said, this very land that was sold into captivity, I will bring my people from all over where I have scattered them and bring them back to this land and they will come and possess this land. And that the, the evidence that he asked Jeremiah to hold on to, to purchase the land, that that evidence is going to become active because even though the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, that's what that means, have fought against this land, I am bringing my people back to this land, starting from verse 37. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries, whither I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in my great wrath, and I will bring them again to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. So to the people at that point, because God had said, I am selling this land into captivity. It seemed like an impossibility. But God gave the prophet Jeremiah that word. Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So can I send the land into captivity, write it off, and bring it back? You can be sure that I can. Because I am the Lord God of all flesh. Let's stand up on our feet this morning as we worship. I want us to stand amazed to this presence. Knowing that there is nothing impossible with God. Knowing that there is nothing that God cannot do. Knowing that our waiting, our trusting, our believing is never in vain. Because of who he is. Not because of what we do. It's because of who he is and what he has done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I stand amazed 
in your presence because I know that there is nothing you cannot do oh God I stand amazed in your presence where I know that there is joy peace and hope we can hope for what God is going to do tomorrow and the day after because there's no
stand amazed in your presence, God. I stand amazed in your presence. Oh, there is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. Joy, peace, and hope. I stand amazed. I stand amazed. Oh God, I stand amazed in Your presence. Where I know there is nothing You cannot do. There is nothing You cannot do. You do amazing, glorious, mighty things. So I stand amazed. I stand amazed in Your presence. Where there is joy, peace, and hope, there is joy, peace, and hope. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We stand amazed in your presence, O oh God, as we come to praise, to worship, to thank, and to bless you, Lord. We speak to our soul this morning and we declare bless, bless the Lord. Prophesy to your soul this morning. Amen. The Bible said, God said to Ezekiel, He said, prophesy to Thank this you, dry bones. So it is Amen. you that will prophesy to the dry bones in you to come alive, to live again. So you will speak to your soul this morning. No matter what is weighing you down, no matter what is heavy, no matter what, what wants to stand in your way or prevent you from praising and worshiping the Father this morning, you're going to speak to your soul, to the depth of your soul, to tell your soul to bless the Lord. To bless the Lord. Declaring our God is good. Thank you, Lord. He's good all the time and His mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
the masses could not disturb him. Death could not corrupt him. Yes. Yes. Hell could not keep him. The grave could not contain him. Hallelujah, the grave could not contain him. And gratification could not restrain him. God has highly exalted him and has given him a name. Mm. He's given him a name. I want to remind you this morning, God says, take me at my word. He gives you permission to use the name. Use the name. Use his name in your battle. Use the name when there's things going on in your home, in your family. Begin to speak the name of Jesus. You say, but I've done that, but it doesn't work. Wait a minute. You keep speaking. God says, my word does not return back to me empty. It must and must and will do what it is accomplished and sent out to do. It will accomplish that which is sent out to do. He says, in my name. God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name. So that means anything that has a name, God is above that. Sickness, God is above that. Anger, God is above that. Disappointment, God is above that. Oh, come on, church. And at that name, every knee. Oh, every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And every tongue shall confess Jesus, he is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church, lift your hands. We're not here to entertain you. We're not here for any of that. We're here to bless the Lord. We're here to bless Him with all our soul, our mind, and our body. Let your body be the living sacrifice of worship today. Let your, your hands be lifted. Let your eyes be upon Him this morning. Let your, your heart step into that place where God will have you be today. Ecclesiastics 3 1 says, To every thing, and it doesn't leave out anything, it says, Everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Whenever God moves in a different season, how many of you are in a different season in your life right now? How many of you are in the same place you were even last week? I hope not. Because God is saying, whenever God moves in a different season, there's a fresh voice. You're going to hear new revelation, new truth, new life, new encouraging words, new words of declaration proclaiming over you, new words of prophecy. There's a new, there's a fresh voice and there's a fresh sound. There's a new sound. There's a new sound when you step out of this season and come into this season, something different happens. There's a fresh voice. I'm crying so much I can't even read this. It is important to understand the season of your life if you are to grow and mature in God. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you with every season comes change. And so that's why this morning we're going to speak the name of Jesus over you. And we already declared how powerful God is. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just speak the name of Jesus. There's no other name. Hallelujah. There's no other name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it again. 
Jesus. 
every struggle Thank you, Jesus. Shine through the shadows Come on, Burn church. like the fire Thank you, Jesus Jesus, we thank you for your name Thank you, Jesus Jesus, we thank you for your name Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know, Dupe, since you shared that word about sitting in your car and you were just screaming, that hasn't left me. And every time I think about it, it sends this burning and this fire in my chest. You know, God says you can come meekly and mildly before me. But sometimes things don't change until we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Come on. That's right. And when we've had enough, yes, come on. sometimes God needs us to find that fire. Hallelujah. And sometimes God needs us to get loud yes. and scream yeah. and say yes. to the enemy, no. you are done. No. We rebuke. Yes. We send chaos into your camp. Yes. Any end of weapon that you try to form against me, in Jesus' name it is destroyed. Yes. And sometimes we do need to just scream in anguish. God, Jesus! Sometimes we need to just scream His name and say, God, help me! God, Jesus, we need you! Sometimes we have to get loud. God needs to know, do you want it? If you want it, then stand up and fight for it. Show the enemy. You think you're big? You think you won? You think you have any authority? You do not. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have been quiet for so long. And we are seeing a world that is being destroyed by the enemy. It is time for us to stand up. And it is time for us to scream. It is time for us to yell. It is time for us to put the enemy he belongs it is time for us to use the authority God has given us and God is just saying as we sang in this song just speak my name that's all you have to do shout my name we've been whispering his name and it is time to stand up and start shouting God's name amen thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah you just gotta say Jesus it's you Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. So we just speak your name over every situation. We speak your name over every circumstance because you are too good, oh God. You are too good, oh God. You are too good, oh God, for us not to believe you. You are just too good, oh God, for us not to believe you. You are just too good, oh God. You have proved your faithfulness. You have done miracles that are mine. There is beauty even when we don't understand because Jesus, we know it is you. We know it is you. And so we choose to believe and declare in faith that we believe this morning. Because Jesus, it's you. It's you, Jesus. It's you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
mental health. I'm not putting you on the spot. Actually, everybody stand up, please. I'm just gonna call these things out. Mental health. I need you to stand up. Brokenness in your body and you need healing. I need you to declare that. There's issues in your family that needs to be reunited. Stand for that. There's prodigals in your family. There's prodigals that you don't even know yet are returning. Stand for that. There's trouble in your soul. There's trouble in your soul. And you need deliverance this morning. There's addiction that is trying to trap you and hold you and destroy you. God wants you free today. There's salvation. Some of you need to give your life to the Lord today. Well, you said what I have. But God wants you to renew that vow that you made before him today. He wants to bring revival in our cities, in this church, in your home, in your workplace. He wants to bring revival inside of you. So don't tell me that God cannot do this. He's too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. He said he will heal cancer. He said he will heal the broken. He said he will bring real life resurrection. He said he will heal mental health, fear, and anxiety. He said he will do that. His word says, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there, church? Really, is there? When God speaks a word over you, you have a choice to believe. You have a choice to stand. You have a choice to proclaim and declare and prophesy over yourself. Don't tell me he can't do this. Don't tell me this is too hard for him. You've been here standing. Some of you have been waiting and waiting, but God says, don't tell me when to do this or that. Don't tell me when to move. Don't tell me how to move. I will move in my timing, says the Lord. But you have to trust him. You have to trust him. So we speak to you right now. Any issues that are in your life right now, we speak to that issue. Cancer, disappear right now. If you have cancer in your body, in the name of Jesus, we bind that. We say in Jesus' name, that spirit of disease, that spirit of infirmity, you leave now in the name of Jesus. We speak to diabetes. We speak to arthritis. We speak to all these things that are not of the Lord. We see broken bodies healed in the name of Jesus. We speak to arthritis. We speak to fibroids. We speak to fibroids. We speak to all these things that we say in the name of Jesus. We speak to fear. We speak to anxiety. We speak to mental health. We speak to you right now. And we say, don't tell me you can't, God can't do this. Don't tell me that God can't do this. Come on, church. Speak cancer. We speak disappearance. We speak speak disappearance. Body God can heal in the name of Jesus. Speak to your body. Speak to your mind. Speak to your spirit. Speak to your body. Speak to your mind. Come on, church. We speak sickness. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Sickness be made whole in your body. Broken body is healed. In the name of Jesus. Don't tell me, devil, that God can't do this. Don't you tell me. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Speak now to speak to your Jesus. body. Jesus. Speak to your body in the name of Jesus. We speak marriages restored. Families renewed. Prodigals are coming home. Prodigals are returning. The lost are being found. The broken are being healed. In Jesus' name. Rosola mama
across the streets. Don't you tell me it can't do it. Don't you tell me it can't do it. We speak revival to our nations. A salvation floods our streets. Don't you tell me he can do it. Don't you tell me he can do it. We speak mental health. Story. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we deal with you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Don't you tell me. We speak revival to our nation. Don't you tell me. 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 Don't you tell me.
my soul on the same way, please. We're not done yet, church. I just want us to stay, continue in the attitude of worship. We're going in a different vein, but the same vein. All these songs that are that were sung today, the words that have been declared, God said, I've given you gifts to declare things and proclaim things and to prophesy things. And I just believe these songs today was like a prophetic word over the house. And this next song that we're going to put up on the screen is God Send the Rain. And there is a powerful outpour of the Holy Spirit coming to this city or whatever city you live in. And it's going to rain down upon you. It's going to saturate, saturate you in His presence. Just stay in attitude of worship. If you have your heavenly languages, continue to pray. I am going to continue to pray. We're moving everything that's in the way, out of the way, so His rain can come down and pour upon you. that the, all the songs that have been sung this morning that there is an outpour of miracles so my body shook because of what I've been told right there that I refuse to come on and that's what I was hearing that amongst the miracles released this morning the gift of prophecy and the gift of vision to the saints. And there was a refrain also in my ear saying that instead of saying that what I cannot do, what? He said, only you can do what no man can do, Jehovah. Only you can say what no man can say, Jehovah. Only you can what no man can do, Jehovah, only you can say. What no man can say, Jehovah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So this song starts to play. I want you to, as we've been doing this morning, taking a step of faith, I want you to take another step of faith and believe for what God is going to speak over you through this song. Send the rain. Send the Holy Spirit to you, you right now where you're seated, where you're standing. Send the rain. Church, please, we're not done yet. I do. I know you may feel tired in your body, but we're going to rise up on our feet. Because in His presence, when we go to be with the Lord, we're going to be worshiping Him 24-7. And God is going to give you enough strength to stand and to worship. Yes. But he wants to speak over the body right now. He wants to prophesy and declare over this house. So we want you to be in agreement with where God is taking us right now. In Jesus' name. Amen.
to this video disclaimer just by the way never heard it never listened to it never sang it but you know that song stopped and then it went back to we've been praying and again God just took me back to that day it was a Sunday it was after church that day it was something similar because I just told God I said God but I've been doing this and I've been doing that and I screamed in my car with my windows wound up so people would not call, probably call 911 for me thinking I'm going crazy. But you know what, even if they did, that would have been fine. Maybe it would have been a chance for a testimony. But it was just a time to cry. To cry out and say, God, let the fullness of time come. So this is what God is saying to all of us because there are some of us the prayers we've been praying, and mom knows this, mom understands what I'm saying. There are some people here that understand why I'm saying this. When you've prayed, not for one, two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty years, for something, and then God chooses to do it, when He chooses to do it, how He chooses to do it, I am talking from a place of experience. It is time for us to cry. We've been praying. I know many of you have been praying for so many things. We've been sowing. I know many of you have given and given. When it's time for food bank, you give. When it's time for offering, you give. You give your tithe, you give. And you give and you give and you're like, God, but why am I still in debt? Why is this still happening? Why am I still happening? Don't give up. Don't give up because now is just the time for you to cry. And God to come in the fullness of time to do what he wants to do and send his reign. And send his reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Seeds. 
Anybody that have extensive lies. In order to clear the field, you don't just go about and do a little shrub thing, you burn. We've seen unusual fires across the nation. Usually we are seen in one province or another, but it's across the nation. In order to sow the good seeds, you clean everything out. So they're burning it. They, so rather than look at what the enemy is doing, look at what God is doing. That's right. He's clearing all the shrubs, everything. And then we in the church start planting the right seed. We put the right words out there. Zechariah 10 1 says, Call for rain in the time of rain. Now he's instructing us to call for the rain. So, which means they've got seeds in the ground. Now we release the rain to watch the harvest come up. We call for revival over the land. That means life seed is now being sown. All the plans that the enemy had for us is turned around. Because he kept telling us, speak prophetically. As a church, as the ecclesia, the governing body, speak his words. So once we release his words, we release the angels to do what they need to do. Yes. So we're watching them now turn. They think they have it, but no. God is using everything. Right. His word says he turns things around for our good. But they think they're getting done. Yes. They're just out there cleaning the land. And all we think is... And God's putting his seed in now. The people say we're doing what they're supposed to do. I should say the church is doing what she was supposed to do. She's putting the right words out there. So as the water of his words, his words goes out there and he sends the rain. So I and one. So it's time for the rain now. It's so time for the harvest. So as we release the, the words out there, he puts the rain there and now we get revival throughout the land. Could be on a greater level. Yes. 
They tasted realities of the Spirit that ruined them for anything less than outpouring of biblical proportions. What they experienced of God's manifest presence compelled them to cry out for more, ask for the, resent, for the rain, the results speak for themselves. And there's different examples. Great Awakening, Welsh Revival, the Azusa Street Revival, the Hebrides Revival, the great revival movements that happened in the 90s, Toronto, Brownsville. Uh, it's a mere sampling, he says, of unusual outpourings of the Spirit over the centuries. With each example, there were individuals who were stewarding the Spirit's movement in their lives while also crying out for more. Their stewardship prepared rain-ready ground for the Spirit to move in unusual, dramatic ways. Now, a generation of rain-ready ground is being cultivated. This is not a statement of spiritual hype. It is absolutely factual. In the midst of global crisis and darkness, a great light is arising. There are stadiums being filled with Christ followers, crying out for the Holy Spirit revival and prayer. There are individuals who have taken Jesus' instruction quite literally and are healing the sick, prophesying and sharing the gospel wherever they go. There are missionaries marching forth into the darkest regions of the planet, carrying the hope of the gospel, while there are also missionaries being raised up to shape culture through kingdom service. As we faithfully steward what He has already given us, the person of the Holy Spirit, let us likewise be faithful to pray for an unusual visitation of heaven on earth. May this great outpouring be a catalyst that dis disciples nations and prepares the way for Messiah Jesus to make his triumphant return. It's raining, so ask for the rain. God is already moving, so let's ask for more and position every area of our lives to experience this inheritance of revival and outpouring. Hallelujah. Send your rain. Send, you. Send your rain, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I think we got to sing that song again. we got to sing that song again. Please. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want everyone standing, please. Hallelujah. We've got the words up with us that are their part of that song. And listen to what he's speaking when he declares as well. <clears throat> Seed that's been planted. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. Stood and prayed and believed. And Lord, I said it on, on Thursday. Seeds of expectancy that have been planted and we're going to see those seeds start to break forth and grow. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song, Roz. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. 